Workers scrutinize the load and trim away any foreign material, defects, and generally ugly bits. The potatoes are then once again separated by size in preparation for the water cutter. The water cutter is basically a potato cannon. Water pumps through it at about 50 miles per hour. The pressure forces the potatoes one at a time through the pipe toward a stationary grid of blades. One whole potato goes in, a hundred potato strips come out. The starchy potato and water soup shoots out onto a conveyor in the dewatering area. Next stop, more quality control. This is our grading deck. The first set of rollers back here is where we take the slivers out. Then we go on to the grater shaker that takes the nubbins and the short pieces out. The rest of the product goes on through the line. The next conveyor carries the fries past a high-res camera that identifies visible defects. Then the automatic defect removal system uses bursts of air to knock out the bad ones. A cutter slices out the imperfection. The fries that make the grade travel to the blanching area for a hot bath. Here the fries submerge into 170 to 180 degree water for 11 to 16 minutes. This will allow the starch granules within the potato cells to swell up, giving the strips a mealy, fluffy texture. No one wants soggy fries, so a trip through the dehydrating tunnel removes the excess moisture. This is our dryer. We evaporate about 9,000 pounds of water per hour through this system. By this point in the process, after peeling, blanching, and dehydrating, 100 pounds of potatoes will yield about 55 pounds of fries. Now, a final round of inspection and into the fryer. Partially frying the potatoes in 375 degree soybean oil dramatically cuts down the cooking time on the restaurant end. After all, it is fast food. A conveyor then carries the hot potatoes through a 180 foot tunnel kept at minus 35 degrees. Flash freezing helps sustain shelf life. The fries emerge at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, ready for packaging and cold storage. This is the freezer here. It's five degrees below zero. We have about 30 to 33 million pounds of French fries in here. It takes us about 30 to 35 days to turn this freezer over. A potato's journey from delivery to storage takes one hour and 10 minutes. About 25% of Ochoa's frozen fries continue their journey to Wendy's. Most chains serve this kind of frozen potato fried in some sort of vegetable oil in similar fryers. Still, each claims to have the secret for perfect fries. This particular development is a frozen fry dispenser that will hold up to 60 pounds of uh, frozen french fries that are ready to be cooked. We simply take a basket, place it in the dispenser, and the electric eye will know that uh, the, fries, uh, the fry basket has been placed there. And we'll then put the uh, fries into our high efficiency gas fryer. And the computer actually begins to count down the amount of time it takes for these fries to be cooked. Dump, salt, scoop, and serve. The specially designed scooping tool makes the perfectly portioned treats stand at attention, ready to take their place next to the burger. America's love affair with French fries began when Jefferson served them at Monticello after his ambassadorship to France, hence their name. Today, McDonald's is the largest single buyer of potatoes in the United States, which means it'll need a whole lot of ketchup for dipping. I'd like some fries, please, with extra ketchup. So, it's back to the liquid production facility, where rows of nozzles deposit ketchup into packets of all sizes. In this facility, we package ketchup from nine grams all the way up to about three gallons. We package about 15 million ketchup packets a day. That equals about four and a half billion packets of ketchup a year. That's half of the ketchup consumed in McDonald's in the United States every year. We package a unique formula of ketchup just for McDonald's. 
So what is it about French fries, the very smell of which makes us salivate? It's likely that the smell of cooking starch and fat incites a physical reaction because our bodies know that much needed calories and energy are on the way. An instinct originating back in history when food was scarce. We like fried food. We don't like to say we like fried food, but we do. If you want a salad, you have it available to you. You may not choose to eat it. The moment you walk in there, you may find that, boy, that burger smells good, and that happens quite a bit. Now that you have your burger and fries, let's complete that meal with a concoction that's part milk, part soft drink, and part dessert, the shake. Again, each chain wants to stand out. Our hand-scooped ice cream shakes are made the old-fashioned way. We hand-scoop the ice cream, add syrup, milk, blend it on an old-fashioned ice cream milkshake blender, and top it off with whipped cream. Another company's shake offering is really more half-shake, half-soft-serve ice cream. Wendy's has had uh, Frosties since the beginning of our existence. Uh, from the longest time, we just had a chocolate Frosty. In 2007, we added a new flavor, uh, vanilla. The way it works is we, we put a mix inside the machine. It comes in a liquid. The hopper is refrigerated, and then it uh, slowly, slowly filters into a, a chamber. And then once it's uh, frozen and the light's ready to go, uh, we're able to portion it out into a Frosty. Company-wide, Wendy's sells about 250 million Frosties annually. Wendy's has another uh, Frosty product now. And then we use a, a spoon, actually, is act the, uh, the mixing mechanism. We release the spoon. And you have a twisted Frosty. And, of course, there's the McDonald's shake. The McDonald's shakes are actually made of 100% dairy mix. A dairy mix is a product that's made of a milk and a milk solids. This prefab dairy mix is combined with liquid milk and flavored syrup, chilled and dispensed by machine. This method provides a consistent product and speedy serve time that the old-fashioned way couldn't match. It was the old-fashioned milkshake that first introduced multi-mixer salesman Ray Kroc to McDonald's in 1954. While most burger joints in the 1950s had one, maybe two, McDonald's used eight multi-mixers. Ray Kroc hopped a plane to California to find out why. Upon seeing the breakout success of the innovative restaurant model, Kroc struck a deal to become McDonald's exclusive franchise broker. With that move, he made business history by founding the largest, most profitable fast food empire on earth, thanks in part to the humble shake. Burgers, fries, and shakes make up 40% of fast food meals served. But move over, burger joints. There's another hombre in town. In one year, Ochoa Foods produces enough fries to reach from the earth to the moon and back more than three times. Fast food tech will return on Modern Marvels. Burger chains dominate the American landscape, but a growing segment of the quick service restaurant biz belongs to cuisine originating south of the border. In recent years, Mexican food has taken off because it has a health halo. It's the idea that there's fresh vegetables, that we're using tortillas, you know, this less fried food than something like french fries and a burger. Taco Bell serves over two billion customers each year resulting in about $6 billion in sales. Most of that revenue comes from the 2 billion tacos and 1 billion burritos it sells annually. We sell a lot of food. When you're gonna make that much, it's gonna take a lot. We, we use over 3.8 billion corn and flour tortillas. We use 120 million pounds of fresh lettuce, 62 million pounds of pinto beans, 295 million pounds of ground beef and 106 million pounds of cheese. But like many of today's well-known fast food chains, Taco Bell was small before it became Grande. Mexican restaurant owner Glenn Bell 
started Taco Bell in Downey, California in 1962. Bell applied McDonald's assembly line process to Mexican food. Still, tacos aren't burgers, so Bell had to tailor prep tools specific to his menu. Glenn Bell wanted to find a way to make hard shell tacos, to fry them quickly, and so he went to a chicken coop manufacturer and talked this guy into making the original fry form out of chicken wire. With this tool, he created a U-shaped hard taco shell. It's easy to fry, stack, and hold. Bell soon became a taco titan, whose company is still known for engineering effective and efficient kitchen equipment. We grill all of our tortillas in our restaurant, and by instituting this grill in our restaurants versus steaming tortillas in the old days, this process has saved significant amount of energy in our restaurants. We're saving over 100 kilowatt hours every day, which is about a tenth of all of our energy. In here is where we hold our hot proteins and sauces. This saves over 125 gallons of hot water every day versus what Glenn Bell used to use back in the old days. There was steam bellowing out. Now today, everything is dry. It's held hotter and more consistently. And plus, we save over 300 million gallons a year of hot water just with this new holding station. These days, many of Taco Bell's products don't need an assembly line. Thanks to various kitchen innovations implemented over time, the process has been streamlined to the point that one person can fill an entire order quickly and consistently. We have portion control devices, for example, like this, versus in Glenville days, they had a pie knife, and they would merely grab in the beef and put it on the taco. We have portion control nacho cheese and red sauce so that we can make sure that we consistently give the right amount of product. And we have sour cream and guacamole that is portion controlled. And all that means you can crank out a fresh taco really fast. Crunchy taco begins with our nice shell here. We add our beef. Put on an ounce and a half of beef. Next, we have a half an ounce of lettuce. And then we top it off with cheese. And that is our freshly prepared taco. This taco today is made in 10.7 seconds. Taco Bell, like other fast food chains, constantly tries to develop food you can eat on the run. A perfect example, the Crunchwrap Supreme. We take one of our 12-inch flour tortillas. We then top it with a portion of our seasoned beef, nacho cheese sauce, with one of our tostada shells, our lettuce, sour cream, and tomatoes. We then fold the product with our special six-sided fold that allows us to ensure the product is completely sealed for maximum portability. We then place the product on the grill for 27 seconds to seal it tight. Take our crunch wrap off the grill, slide it inside our easy-to-eat-from bag, and fold it down to serve. When you're in the car and you want to eat the product, all you need to do is open up the bag, slide the product up, as you can see, nicely sealed, and you can take a bite and enjoy. The foil-lined bag isn't just portable. It also helps the product retain heat. Because of the often unusual shapes and contents of their products, Taco Bell has to develop packaging specific to their needs. The wraps are different materials. Some are, are thinner than others. Some are thicker than others based on the protein or the carrier that we're holding it in. This is used for a soft taco. It's a pocket. One use of packaging that is a little unique is our quesadilla. So there's our fresh grilled quesadilla. 